This video is to introduce a topic of absolute and relative error. This concept is very important before going into error propagation. We need to understand the idea between absolute and relative error. Absolute error is the actual value of the error including the proper units. These are the things that you've seen before when we were working with our lab. So taking our first piece as an example, in 0 0.94 plus or minus 0 0.2, the 0 0.2 is the absolute error. So that is the actual error value, including the units. There is a general way for us to write this, and let's say we're talking about the property y, for example. A general way to represent this is y plus minus delta y, or y plus minus delta y. So this little symbol here, this little symbol here represents the uncertainty. And in Greek, it means delta, whether it's, this is uppercase, this one over here is a lowercase. That's a general representation. That's absolute error, but what is relative error? Relative error is taking kind of a percentage of your absolute uncertainty from your original actual value. So it's a relative, it's in relation to your actual value, how much space does your error take up? So in a way, it's represented as a percentage. So how do we represent this? Well, to represent relative error, the way for us to calculate that is in fact taking our delta y and dividing that by our actual value y. If you want to represent that as a percentage, if you want to represent as percentage, then you need to multiply that by a hundred. But most of the times when you're doing calculations in error propagation, you're not going to need to write this middle step. You're not going to need to write this thing as a percentage. Rather, most of the times you will be writing it and using this form instead. But let's do an example just to see how we do it. In this example, we're going to look at how the rel calculating the relative error of 0 0.2 as a part of 0 0.94. So our relative error is absolute error, we put the absolute error on top, divided by our actual value, which gives us here as 0 0.21, and if you want to represent that as a percentage, you can, and this gives us 21%. In actuality, there were more significant digits, but because of our original value, we're just going to leave it as two significant digits. Also, like I said, you're, we're rarely going to write our relative errors in our lab reports. Most of the time, you're converting your relative error to absolute error, so this middle step, this written part, is not actually needed. But if you are carrying this relative error and you're needing it to calculate something else, make sure you're not rounding at this step. I'm rounding it here to show you the response, but you never round until the very end, whether that's doing a question or that is doing your lab reports. Let's take a look at a few examples. Calculate the relative error of 0, 100 decimal 0 plus minus 0 0.6 centimeters. So our relative error, this is going to be 0 0.6 centimeters divided by our 100 centimeters. And this should give you 0 0.006. Or if you want to convert that to a percentage, you would get 0.6%. And as I said, I'm not worrying too much about significant figures because as I see in your lab reports, this is not going to be an important step. So it's almost better to even keep all your significant digits. The next example, example two, we're going to calculate the absolute error. So note down, we're cal calculating the absolute error of 0 0.0055 kilograms. This is the opposite 
of taking our relative error. Instead of division, dividing our absolute error by our actual value, we are going to multiply our actual value by our relative error, which is 2%. But don't forget, we need to convert this 2% to a decimal place, which is 0 0.02. So we need to multiply by 0 0.02, which then gives us an error of plus minus 0 0.00011 kilogram. To represent our final response with our actual value and our error, we got to make sure we do our proper rounding. So we have here 0 0.005, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can keep this last digit here, but we're going to do plus minus 0 0.1231 kilograms. So this, if you want to refine an absolute error, then that will be the final representation of our data. We're going to use this for error propagation, so please do more practice if you, need, you feel like you need more practice on absolute and relative error. If not, I will see you next time. Bye now.